Chapter 6 Relent Hey, Fake. Uh, Riku. As the replica fled from his defeat, a red haired man appeared in front of him. Axel. What do you want? Breathing hard, the replica glared up at him. That hero was pretty strong, huh? Axel smirked and took a step closer. Even Namine admits she likes strong guys, you know. The replica looked down, biting his lip. What went wrong? Why do I hate Sora so much? He only kept getting lost in his muddled memories. Well, said Axel. You'd like to get stronger, wouldn't you, Riku? How? Axel tossed a card at him. If you use that card, you'll be able to get some more power. How's that sound? Why are you helping me? Said the replica, staring at the card he let fall to the floor. It was entirely black, no pictures or anything. Because I wouldn't mind seeing the hero taken down myself. There was something else that Axel wasn't telling him. The replica felt that intuitively. But the fact remained that he didn't have the strength to beat Sora as he was now. So, Riku, what are you waiting for? The replica picked up the card and headed to the door. That's right, just hold the card up to the door, and then you'll have the chance to become stronger. The replica did as he said. As Axel watched, a smirk came to his face, and then he vanished. After making his way through Traverstown, the city of meetings, he came to a world where lotuses bloom in profusion. Riku didn't think he had ever seen it before. Whose memory is this? He grumbled, swinging Soul Eater at the Heartless. Whether the memories were there or not, the Heartless and the Darkness kept coming after him. So, he had to keep fighting them. If he couldn't defeat the Darkness in himself, there wouldn't be any future. Riku kept running with single-minded resolve. Donald looked around in the empty marble hall. I kinda thought Riku would be waiting for us. Gosh, it doesn't look like he's here, said Goofy. Maybe he doesn't feel like fighting with you anymore after all. They were both looking anxiously at Sora. So far, Riku had been waiting to jump out at them every time they'd made it through a world. But this time, he wasn't here. I sure hope so. Sora sighed as if to himself, frowning. Three figures watched the scene in a crystal ball. So what's going on, Vexen? I thought Riku was under your control. So, where is he? Larxene arched her finely shaped eyebrows and stared expectantly at Vexen. Beside her, Axel smirked. He's hiding somewhere to lure Sora deeper into the castle, right? I suppose we should just leave it at that. He turned to Vexen. Right about now, Riku, or rather, the replica, should be wandering through the worlds. All his plans were in order, Axel thought smugly. I'm so sorry, Larxene taunted Vexen. It's just hard to tell whether your research is supposed to be of any use whatsoever. Vexen began to tremble with rage. Silence! Aw, you hate being told the truth, don't you? Simple-minded for a scientist. As if you're one to talk. The internal squabbles between those two were also entirely within the range of predictability. And then, another major player appeared on the scene. Enough. The one who stepped in to interrupt Larxene and Vexen was no other than Marluxia, who was in charge of the castle. Axel glanced at the man and folded his arms. In the periphery of his vision, he could see Nomine staring at the floor and trembling like a cornered animal. Vexen, the fact is that your project was a failure, said Marluxia. You had better not disappoint us again. Color appeared in Vexen's sallow face, making him suddenly appear closer to healthy, and he stalked up to Marluxia as if he might seize him by the throat. Disappoint you? You go too far. In this organization, you are number 11, while I am number 4, and I will not be ordered around by the likes of you. This castle and Nomine have been entrusted to me. Defying me will be seen as treason against the organization. And traitors are eliminated, Larxene added, grinning as if she couldn't wait to see it happen. That's what the rules say. She was right. It was organization law, 
Treason meant death. I tell you, the project failed, Marluxia repeated, and I must report that failure to our leader. Their leader, a man who had once had another name with other memories. He was the actual fake, the one who had stolen the identity of Ansem. What? No, wait, don't tell him that! Vexen sounded as if he might fall to his knees and beg. Marluxia made a small, cruel smirk and told him quietly, Perhaps we can work something out. How? Vexen looked up. Eliminate Sora yourself. Axel pretended to be surprised at the order Vexen received. Without looking straight at her, he was still focused on Naminé, who cowered in the corner, her thin shoulders trembling. Through the door, he found a world bathed in a beautiful sunset. What is this place? The replica looked around, blinking in the blaze of the lowering sun. What's going to happen here to make me stronger? The atmosphere here was incredibly serene. In this castle, people reclaimed their lost memories. That was what he'd been told anyway. But he couldn't recall ever seeing a place like this before. Against the hopeless depths of darkness that filled up his own heart, this town felt so warm. He began walking, unhurried. There didn't seem to be any heartless here. Suddenly, the air wavered. Huh? A blonde boy on a skateboard zipped past him. The boy didn't seem to notice the replica at all. Hey, wait! The replica chased after the boy on the skateboard who hurtled down the town's gently sloping streets. He came to a place that looked like an open square. Shops stood here and there, but no people that he could see. The replica caught his breath and walked into the square. What was that all about? The blonde boy was nowhere to be found, as if he'd only seen a ghost. The replica wandered around the town, painted red with the sunset. After a bit, he came to a corner on the edge of town that seemed somehow neglected. There was a big hole in the wall. I wonder if there's anything through here, he murmured and went closer. After Riku finally made his way through the Lotus Forest, he met an enormous Heartless, the Trick Master. He never flinched, but ran straight at it and jumped high and brought Soul Eater down on its arm. Why do I keep running into these giant Heartless? Riku grated as he landed, and the Trick Master swiped at him. Knocked back, Riku managed to catch himself and keep his balance. Then he kicked off from the wall to slash at the Trick Master again. His nails broke against the hard ground as he landed. Still, he had to defeat this thing. He had to keep going, to find Sora again, and to deal with the darkness inside him. Through the hole, the replica found a shadowy forest. He went slowly, looking around him all the while. A dark, dismal feeling dominated the place. Almost like the inside of my own heart, the replica thought. Why can't I beat Sora? Why do I want to fight him at all? Because Naminé hates him. Naminé never wants to see him again. So I have to stop him from finding her. It should have been a simple enough reason. And yet, for some reason, his heart felt so heavy. The replica reached in his pocket and clutched the charm from Naminé tightly in his hand. That's why I have to defeat Sora. In the distance through the trees, he could see sunbeams. He ran forward as if trying to leave his worries behind. His path brought him to a great big mansion. Sora? There, up ahead, Sora and Vexen were facing each other down. Neither of them appeared to notice the replica's presence. They were shouting about something. Well, well, what brings you here, Riku? The replica turned at the sudden voice from behind him. Axel was standing there. What's happening here? The replica demanded. You said I'd get stronger if I came here. Huh? Is that what I said? Axel smirked. Did you lie to me? I wouldn't do that. Take a look, Riku. The replica looked again at the scene between Sora and Vexen. They were just beginning to fight. With the help from his friends, Sora was certainly able to deal Vexen some damage. He's pretty strong, huh? Axel remarked. The replica said nothing, only watching Sora. He was strong, but... None of that matters! Just make Riku go back! Sora was shouting, with the keyblade pointing at Vexen. Hmm, looks like I'd better jump in, Axel muttered. Just make him go back. You really have no idea what you're saying, Vexen told Sora, 
The Riku you speak of has but one fate, to sink into the darkness. What? I'm going to sink into the darkness? Vexen's words struck Replica with the deep unease. Huh. That wasn't in the game plan. Axel laughed as if it weren't really much of a problem. What do you mean by that? Asked the Replica. Axel gave him a nasty smile. You go on ahead. I'll settle things here. As he said that, the Replica found himself enveloped in darkness. What? And then, before he could get out another word, he was standing in another hall. What just... He had no idea what was happening. Sink into darkness. And what's Axel up to? What am I supposed to do? His head was throbbing in pain. I hate Sora! Nomine had said that. Or... Had she really? His memories were getting more and more uncertain. The one thing I know is, I'm going to protect Nomine from Sora. So I have to beat him. I have to save Nomine. He told himself that, and a few minutes later, he sensed the presence of others. It was Sora and his friends. If you go any farther, you'll hurt Nomine, the replica told Sora, who had already passed by without seeing him. The replica said so, because with everything in him, he believed that was the truth. Nothing else could be true. You still want to fight? Sora yelled, turning to face him. But Vexen's gone! You're free now! Free from Vexen? Was he controlling me? A frown momentarily crossed the replica's face, but his feelings for Nomine easily drove out any doubts. That's right. I promised her. I'm protecting Nomine from you. The replica slowly told Sora, his sword raised. That's what's in my heart. We can protect her together, cried Sora. Protect Nomine along with Sora? That was impossible, because Nomine couldn't stand Sora. I'm the one who's keeping her safe. I made a promise to her, the replica shouted. Promise? I promise. That night, I made a promise to her. I did. There was a meteor shower one night when we were little. Nomine got scared and said, What if a falling star hits the islands? So I told her, If any falling stars come this way, I'll protect you. But that story's the same as Sora's, Goofy exclaimed almost before the replica had finished talking. What are you talking about? But that was the promise I made to her that night. I said I'd protect her, Sora insisted as if their memories could somehow be the same. Stop lying. You weren't the one there that night, the replica snapped. It was just the two of us, that time. Sora wasn't there. You're the one who wasn't there, said Sora, and she gave her good luck charm to me. Her what? This! Sora reached into his shirt and held it up, a charm exactly the same as the one he had. How did you get that? Why do you... Oh, good try, Sora. The replica stepped closer, his sword still raised. Huh? That must be a fake. I've got the real one right here. The replica shouted and took out his own charm. What? Two of them? Fakes should be destroyed. The replica leaped up and lunged for Sora. Whoa! Sora barely managed to block the attack with the keyblade. It's not a fake. Nomine gave this to me. I'm the one who's real. As if in defiance of Sora's certainty, the replica pushed him back. And yet, my pendant's the real one, cried Sora, swinging. The replica felt the impact from the keyblade through his sword. It bolted him over. <clears throat> he winced, his shoulders heaving with huge breaths as he got to his feet again. Why can't I win? Why are our memories the same? Questions were swirling thick in his head. What darkness am I going to sink into? Riku! Sora cried. Rejecting him, the replica turned and ran, unaware that the pendant fell from his pocket and bounced on the cold floor. That dim chamber in the castle basement. Lexeus appeared in front of Zexion, looking as if he'd just been somewhere else. Is something wrong, Lexeus? Zexion asked. Something between displeasure and grief flitted over Lexeus' face, but his voice when he spoke was perfectly calm. Vexen is no more. 
Yes, I could smell it happening. The scent of Vexen snuffed out of existence by Axel. Members of the organization striking one another down. I find it deplorable. Whether or not Zexion truly felt that way was impossible to tell from his cool expression under the feeble light in the basement. Our problem is Sora. Vexen proved to be no match for him. Yet, he's still under Nominé's control. Before long, the hero will be no more than a puppet for Marluxia. Like say has lowered his gaze. What are we to do then? Said Zexion, relentlessly questioning. Shall we eliminate Sora before he falls into Marluxia's clutches? Eliminate Sora. Lexace's eyes went wide at those words. There is no need for that. If Marluxia obtains the power of light, then we obtain the power of darkness. Riku, of course. Lexace nodded, then vanished again. In the room with the crystal ball, Nomine sat on a chair in the corner, staring down. Right about now, Sora should be heading to the island. I'm there on the island, to part of him from the last shards of his memory. Nomine. She looked up to see Axel standing there, a member of the organization. But she had the sense there was something different about him, something not quite right. You're all he's got left, he told her gently. Her gaze dropped. I was the one who merged Sora's memories to make that happen. But there's nothing I can do. Not now. If you don't stop this, no one will. At that, she looked up again. She really didn't know what he meant. How many times do I need to say it? You're the only one who can help him. But I... It's too late. Her voice was scarcely audible. Everything was already in motion. How could she stop it now? You shouldn't give up just yet. Axel moved closer to her, peering into her face. Say, Namine, have you noticed? Marluxia doesn't seem to be around. What are you saying? Axel smirked at her. Just that there's no one here who would want to get in your way. You're saying that you won't stop me? She thought. She slowly got to her feet. Just make it count, said Axel. Nomine gave him a tiny nod and ran out of the room. After watching her leave, Axel laughed softly, and then louder. <laughs> now this should be interesting. So it was worth all that trouble after all. He went to the crystal ball to peer at the image of Sora. Now then. Sora, Nomine, Riku, Marluxia, Larxene. It's about time you gave me one hell of a show. Grinning to himself, he touched the crystal ball, and the image changed. It showed the replica. And you, fake, Axel murmured, gazing at the image of the replica running across the marble hall. You'll set the final act in motion. Nominee ran down the castle stairs. Right now, Sora should be in one of those white rooms. I have to hurry. I'm not gonna make it. Just as that went through her mind, something bumped into her. Thinking it must be an organization member, she braced herself. But it was the replica. Nomine, he shouted, his face dark white. Her shoulders began shaking. Riku, I mean, replica, she started. But her voice was so small that he didn't even hear. You know why? You said you hated Sora, and you never wanted to see him again. So I thought I'd keep you safe. But he's got the same kind of pendant that you gave me. What does it mean? Nomine, what's going on? The replica was shouting, clawing through his hair in raw confusion. I... She looked down for a moment, but then gazed straight at him. I'm sorry. He fiercely grabbed her by the shoulders. Sorry? Sorry for what? I made up your memories. They're fake. And so are Sora's. Nominate told him, each word slow and deliberate. I can control people's memories. I'm a witch. My memories. My memories? And Sora's memories are fake? I linked together the chain of your memories. I made them both. Your memories are fake, made with links from Riku's memories. And I instilled them into the puppet that Vexen created. 
As what she told him sank in, the strength left him, and he sat down there on the floor. I'm sorry. I was wrong. So I have to go right now. What are you talking about? He screamed, clutching at his head. Nominate, tell me. I don't have time now. I'm sorry, Replica. She turned away from him and ran. Nominee, wait, please! She didn't look back. Nominee! No one was there anymore to hear the replica's cries. When Riku finally reached the Great Hall, it was filled with an awful stench. Sensing an unsettling presence, he stopped and stood ready with Soul Eater. That smell, you're another one of those nobodies, said Riku. And then the nobody revealed himself. I am Luxaeus. You've done well thus far, but you possess your powers and yet fear darkness. What a waste. Riku scowled. I do not fear it. He said as if to convince himself. I'm... I sense that you do. Luxaeus interrupted, quite unperturbed. You're also capable of controlling the darkness. Cast away your useless fear. Open your heart and embrace the darkness. And if I don't? Riku retorted, steadily closing in on Lexaeus. If he embraced the darkness, he would become stronger. But he didn't need that kind of strength. He only wanted to use his own strength. Lexaeus gave him the briefest of smiles and raised his heavy axe-like sword. Then you lose both light and darkness and disappear. Enormously powerful darkness radiated from him, fierce enough to make Riku think of Ansem. Riku grunted as the pressure of it slammed against him. I, Luxaeus, will not yield to the frail heart of an infantile coward. Now stop resisting and let the darkness in. Never! Riku brandished Soul Eater and rushed at Luxaeus. I am not afraid of the darkness! Ha! Nonsense! You can become stronger, but if you do not accept the darkness, you will be destroyed. Lexaeus' sword knocked Riku back and came down on the floor with enough force to cleave it, scattering chips of marble, which Lexaeus crumbled in his fist. <clears throat> Leaping to avoid more flying shards, Riku sailed over Lexaeus' head to land behind him, twisting himself just before he landed to slash at Lexaeus' back. How's this? He struck Lexaeus a few blows until... This isn't over yet. Lexaeus threw his weapon at Riku. Ah! The heavy sword bounced on the floor and came straight for him. You won't defeat me, and neither will the darkness. Riku had fallen to one knee, but he stayed low and dashed in under Lexaeus' guard to stab up at him with Soul Eater. Ugh, to think you had so much power. Now Lexaeus dropped heavily to his knees. Riku jumped back to put some distance between them, also out of breath. What's the matter, Lexaeus? He said between gasps. Even without using the darkness, I can still defeat you. Darkness isn't all it's cracked up to be, huh? Riku told him. This fight is mine. Lexaeus gave him a cruel smile. Hmm. So I must accept my defeat here, but do not make the mistake of underestimating the darkness in me. As I am destroyed, it will leave this ruined vessel and drown you. Then there was a terrible shockwave far greater than what Riku had felt from the darkness that Lexaeus radiated before the battle. Wh what's happening? A relentless swirl of darkness surrounded him, swallowing him up until he disappeared into it. Lexaeus laughed madly. This is my strength. I, number five in the organization. I, who was once his favorite pupil. Those were Lexaeus' final words before he vanished into the darkness. He was in the dark. Nothing but darkness. On and on forever. Riku stood there alone. What happened to me? He murmured, trying to look around. Where am I? A whisper replied to him. I see you now. Clearly. Lexaeus? Riku cried. The whispery voice seemed to be mocking him. Riku, I can see your heart. No, it's not Lexaeus, Riku said to himself. Darkness this foul could only be him. 
that presence, that stench. He knew it. Ansem! He shouted. That name. It might as well be the name for the darkness that was lodged inside him. The voice laughed at him. You call out my name, Riku. You have been thinking about me. It sent a chill down Riku's spine. Those memories he would rather forget. That revolting feeling in the moment when Ansem had taken over his body. That revolting feeling in the moment when Ansem had taken over his body. You are afraid of the darkness I wield. Good. The more you think of me, the nearer my return draws. And when I have awoken, I will take hold. Riku involuntarily shrank back. It felt like the darkness was closing in, suffocating him. Closing in on his heart. And your heart will be mine to command. As the voice said that, the man himself appeared. Ansem. Riku couldn't move, as if that cold stare turned him to ice on the spot. How could he escape the darkness? How could he escape Ansem? The terrible gaze pierced him through. Then he heard another voice. Riku, fight! Don't let him win! As Riku heard it, a ray of light shone on him. Your Majesty! He cried, and the light grew, turning everything bright. You meddlesome king! And some shout faded into the light. Riku woke up, groaning, to find himself in the hall again. He felt a little unsteady, but nothing hurt. The king... he protected me? He murmured, slowly getting to his feet. Your majesty, where are you? Please answer me. He looked frantically around the hall, but the king was nowhere to be seen now, or heard either. But you're with me, aren't you? Riku's hand at his chest curled into a fist. Remember, Riku, you're not alone. He thought he could hear the king's voice quietly telling him that, and he started walking again. It can't be true, the replica thought. My memories, all fake. That can't be true. He ran as if to chase after Naminé, even though she was long gone. He had to make her take back those words, and he had to keep her safe from Sora. Sora's memories are the fake ones. He opened the door only to find yet another marble room, but in the middle of it, Naminé and Sora were talking. I have to protect her from Sora. That was the only thought in his head. Because I went into your memories, and... Naminé was saying, Let me explain this. The replica interrupted. Riku! cried Sora, startled. Plain and simple. The replica went on. Your memory is a train wreck. You're not the one who's meant to protect Naminé. That's me. But here you are, getting led astray by all those false memories. He lunged for Sora, his sword poised to strike. No, stop it! Naminé screamed, but the replica never heard her. Sora grunted and blocked his blow with the keyblade. I'm the one who will protect Naminé. The replica jumped back and then swung at Sora again with renewed momentum. Come on, Riku! We don't have to do this! Sora shouted. As if in refusal, the replica knocked him back hard. Sora! cried Naminé. Riku! Sora was trying to get up. The replica walked steadily closer to him. Looks like I win. He held his sword over Sora's head. Riku, don't! Naminé shouted again. Oblivious, the replica swung. You're through, you imposter! No! As she cried out, the flash of light filled the room. The replica's vision blurred. He made a tiny, pained sound, and everything wavered. The strength went out of his legs. Promise? It was Naminé's voice from somewhere far away. Riku? He could hear Sora calling his name, but he didn't understand. Am I? Riku! Riku! Sora's voice was so distant. I hate you. Why are you calling my name like that? And then he lost his hold on consciousness. And he was thinking. <laughs>